This fan base is amazing. The city of Cincinnati is amazing, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Desmond takes a handoff, runs to the right. He's got all sorts of room to the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Hello, listeners, new and old. Welcome back to your favorite Bearcats podcast, Viva La Cats. I am your host, Justin Hiles, accompanied by my great friend, Steve Maurer. And we are here to bring you the very best of the Bearcats every single week and not so much anymore because it is the off season. So figure it out. Ah, uh, with that said, speaking of the off season, we have some interesting news. Um, it hasn't been official, but I think it's official now. Um, we have a very special guest on today's episode. Please do yourself the honors. Introduce yourself. Hello. I am a friend of Lisa Brannon's who still has cameras and audio recording devices set up in athletic director John Cunningham's office. And I am here to tell you some very important information regarding our new apparel deal. Wow, that is some okay. uh, exciting. It's, it's very exciting. I, so um, I'm, I'm wondering. Um, is know, that not illegal? I can neither confirm nor deny legal proceedings at this time. Okay. Um, uh, just a quick uh, question before we get into the juicy stuff. Uh, but uh, how is Lisa doing? She is doing well. Go Flyers. <laughs> okay. Um, Justin, why, why don't you just get right into it? What's, what, what is this news? That yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you have informed us that you have some important news on the uh, apparel deal. We've kind of all uh, been wondering. A lot of people have clamored, think that it's uh, Jordan. Maybe it's Nike, but you have the official scoop. So from your listenings in the office, from your wiretap, tell us, what have you learned? While Jordan and Nike have both been rumored, there have been some other apparel companies in the mix as well, including Reebok, New Balance, Yeezy. Yes, Yeezy, as controversial as that may seem. Adidas as well. And fun fact, Under Armour is actually still in consideration to remain the sponsor of our uniforms and jerseys. Do you do you find that to be a hot topic? I do not shop at that store, but I do not believe that they carry any of those merchandising brands. So I'm I'm wondering, um, yeah, are you the person that has been supplying all of the rumors to Twitter? There's been a lot of rumors on Twitter and social media sites, as well as our Discord. Uh, are you the one supplying those rumors? While I am one of the main rumor supply chains, I will also say, while Lisa Brannon has access to these recording devices in the athletic department, Hep Cronin also still has access to these recording devices, as well as Amy Fickle. Okay, wow, so so what <laughs> what I'm seeing is that there is a trend here. Um, what I can say is security is very light in the Lindner <laughs> Center. That's true. Anyone can just kind of walk in there, can't they? That's that is that is kind of crazy. Um, sir, why why is it taking so long for this this to happen? There's a lot of wondering by the fans. Is like you know what what how why is it taking so long? You know. How long will it take? Will it actually happen? Can you give us some insight? There's been lots of details that need to be hashed out, of course, when it comes to uh, returning brands such as Jordan and Nike, which I will give you the scoop, are the leading brands while others have been in consideration. Um, while money has come into play, also duration of the contract, 
um, and then what the designs will look like. Um, one hot topic has been whether to keep the iconic triangle design that Under Armour kind of invented or bring back possibly the cat scratch, buying that from Adidas. So there are lots of details that are still being worked out, but a deal is coming very soon. Um, I, I thought you were going to tell us, I thought, I thought you were going to tell us what the deal was. You said you had important news. Like, like it was, it was groundbreaking. Like you were going to give us the scoop. We were going to be able to drop the scoop on the pod. So like, come on, holding out? are you holding out? You got the goods and you're not giving it to us. If there's one thing that Lisa Brennan and her friends never do, it's hold out. So, (laughs) Wait, I, I still don't believe this. Reveal yourself, source. Show the people who you are. There, there, there's there's no need for that. We don't need to get Do in there. How am I now. supposed to trust that you are a reliable source? You, I, I've been a part of this podcast before. You can trust me in, in my credibility. Huh. So you've been listening in on our shows? What? I, 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 this man. Are you Terry Nelson? Possibly. Are you Alex Meacham? Possibly. Are you Trey Scott? You guys are way overhyping who I am. I'm not any <laughs> of these famous people. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, hmm. why don't we let the people know who it actually is? I I don't know who it is. Oh shit! It's Joel. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Hi everyone. Hey, Joel. It is good to be back. How's it going, buddy? Oh, good to have just you fine here. and dandy. How are you guys doing? Man, that, uh, Justin, we got to give him, you know, this props for that acting performance. Like, we we call it upon you, and you did not disappoint, sir. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I've been battling a little bit of, a, like, a sore throat, so uh, oh, okay. I was a little muffly and choked up when I first joined. Oh, okay. Well, you know. The, Would you like it, to explain why that is the case as well? Um, No. <laughs> 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 I guess it was too much of a leading question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, He's not going to give up much information. You don't have to give us all your personal news here. It's okay. Joel, are yeah. you sure we're not going to go with like Skechers or, or New Balance or somebody <laughs> yeah, else as part of this deal? Skechers. Well, I did say New Balance. I should have said Skechers. God, could you imagine a Skechers, like a legit <laughs> apparel deal? Um, Actually, <laughs> I think it's going to be Asics brand. <laughs> hey, they make some good shoes, man. What if it's like Crocs? Crocs. Bro, the day that Crocs drops a basketball shoe, uh, we're we're signing that deal. There's people what, buying it. Look, what other sure. uh, not to uh, not to cause you to lose any other followers by not being serious about this combo because I know it's been a very I'm uh, so- highly <laughs> followed conversation. Sorry, sorry. If you're listening to this and you we lose you as a follower because you you are not on board with the satire then have fun <laughs> see ya <laughs> don't don't um, <laughs> don't stick around <laughs> but, but i was gonna ask um what would be like the single worst apparel deal starberry starberry barry stephen barry somehow revives as a company stefan marbury steps out onto the floor at the university of cincinnati and says welcome back to Starberry, fifteen dollars <laughs> shoes are back, baby, and uh, yeah, and then then our sh- our shoes just start breaking everywhere. So that's amazing. Or the Aeropostale deal that UConn wore that one year. UConn had an Aeropostale deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, their football yeah, team wore Aeropostale one year. Airy. Uh, I feel like I feel like the gap would uh <laughs> would be pretty bad. <laughs> Gap, old navy walk out in the like one dollar sandals that you get. i will say don't don't you dare disrespect old navy activewear i have some of the comfiest sweatpants i own from yeah old the, those leggings are legit i've worn some of my girlfriend Lulu, or my fiance lemon they've actually been talked about as like a legit player which is kind of funny yeah. to me. like it's, it's crazy i oh. mean speaking from a footwear scene like they've actually put they've they've put a lot of money into footwear recently like a shit ton mm-hmm. So, like, you know, not now, but a while from now, I think it's possible. Blast from the past, Russell Athletic, baby, dude. I am all on board for Russell. Russell or champion, 
Find us, find us something. Get us the starter jacket. Champion sponsored every Pee Wee football league known to (laughs) man. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Um, But of course, you know, the leading conversation is Jordan and Nike. And, um, you know, that's what appears to have been leaked from all these athletes posting um, these Bearcat logos with Nikes in the picture or in New Jersey, you know, whether they've been Photoshopped or, but I want to hear you guys' opinions. You know, why don't you think this is coming uh, anytime sooner? I mean, I think, I honestly, I don't know. I, I, th- I think it's one of those things where they could have this whole deal like figured out already. And I mean, it, let's let's be honest, like if you're talking to like Jameel Reynolds, who we'll get into later, if you're talking to any of these new recruits, people that you're going to be on this recruiting trail for in the coming months in May. That's going to be a talking point, like for sure, like nobody, especially for like those higher profile athletes, they're going to want to know, like, am I going to be hooping in Jordans? Like, that's the thing they're going to want to know. Am I going to be playing in Nike? Like, it's not a deal breaker. But it sure as hell is a nice seasoning on top of that whole conversation of why we should bring you to Cincinnati. So I think the sooner they do it, the better. But personally, I feel like if it's going Jordan, if it's going Nike, they've already got it worked out and they're on a hush deal with anybody that they've talked to that's just saying, here's what you get. We'll announce it later. Like I I genuinely believe that. The problem with any other like uniform supplier is that they're not going to give us the same like sweetheart deal that Under Armour gave us. You know, no one's given UC like fifty million dollars anymore for ten years. You know, and th- I, like, I mean, I understand like back in the nineties, like Bearcat fans bought the Jordan gear in droves, but it that was you know it was twenty five years ago, and the, like Nike, Nike and Jordan in a, as a company have both like elevated uh, like way past that, and you know I. I just don't want people to get their hopes up. And then I think some, but somebody was trolling the other day on Twitter and it was like, no, I overheard one of the coaches saying that they were going to Adidas. And everybody was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> but people I think everybody's just like on edge right now. Like well, Joel, there think- was, there was so a guy sorry. in our discord today that block. You should join the discord, by the way, Joel, Sat- okay. Catskiller social. I haven't seen your name in there. Get in there. Come on. Cozart's donkey. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> I go by Lisa Brandon's burner out. <laughs> yes. It's true. I actually don't. There is a Twitter account with that name. <laughs> yeah. That's not me. I can't, I can't <laughs> we caught, we caught her tweeting again earlier this yeah. season. Oh, she yeah. tweets all the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's not that special anymore, you know. But... Hey, hey, it's free real estate. <laughs> yes. Yes. Speaking of, you can get real estate from Lisa Brandon. Just you could probably find her website somewhere, you know. <laughs> Selling homes in the Dayton area now. Neat. Um, I, I do think though, it's like, I just don't want anybody to get their hopes up uh, for it to not happen. I mean, like it, it seems like it's heading that way. Pretty, pretty sure that's where it's going just because process of elimination, the last, the other two big providers have said no to us within the past 10 years. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think that's, what's going to happen, but I don't know. I, I just, I, they, nothing like we didn't know about the head football coach for a week and there was like no news out of like the school for an entire week either. And, Sa- and, and Satterfield wasn't even a leading name. Like he came yeah. out of left field literally the night before. Well, yeah. so was Wes Miller. Yeah. It's yeah. the same deal. Um, like it's, it's an, a lot of this news, like Cunningham has been so good at be- keeping hush. It's oh, his yeah. best skill. Oh yeah. Um, And I think, you know, you said earlier um, how Jordan and Nike brand was so big in the 90s. And that was, of course, when Jordan was up and coming and it was all the rave. And, um, you know, that was the brand to be a part of. Um, no schools really use Jordan from like, what, 2005 on until I think Michigan football was the first one like five years ago when they announced that deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, more schools have come into play with the Jordan brand, but um you know, it's still, you look at Nike and Adidas and Under Armour as the three main ones, and Jordan is kind of creeping back up into that space. And um, if we were able to secure that, I mean, that would be one, like that would work wonders for the recruiting trail, of mm-hmm. course. Going into the Big 12 would help as well. Like, I mean, Cincinnati, I wouldn't even say is an up and coming school because of the college football playoff run, because of the, you know, the continued 
not recently, but I mean, basketball was always in that top 25 conversation, like all of the 2010s. So, yeah, um, you know, Cincinnati is a big brand when it comes to, you know, national brands. Like I would consider Cincinnati bigger than like Utah or, you know, Maryland or like these other schools that don't have the athletic success. So I definitely think something's coming. Um, and I know the spring football game is coming up soon. So maybe they're waiting until after that um, because they just want to do like a hard reset when there aren't any activities going on. Like they'll take a break after the spring season, come back into, you know, camp higher ground and um, training camp with all the new gear and all the new apparel. So mm-hmm. maybe there, maybe the deal has been made and it's just kind of been waiting to be released. Yeah. So- I- that uh i'll just let give you a quick anecdote there's still a closet at uc that has a bunch of old like nike stuff from like 2006 and like all the old adidas stuff like there's still just like boxes of shirts and like shoes and stuff and i always wanted it they would never give it to me i was like why like it's just sitting there so but sorry i'm sure it's probably for time capsule like being able like (laughs) It's one thing to say, yeah, just Google a picture of the old Adidas uniforms. It's another to say, hey, here's what it looks like on a mannequin or here what it looks like on a player. Like, you know, if you're designing throwbacks or if you're just looking for something to reference when making memorabilia or anything. Yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting, honestly, just to see how all this shakes out, because this is a thing where we could get the news drop tomorrow. Or I think I think the I would say earliest is any time now. Latest would be like July 1st because you're going to the big 12. Everything's there. The whole celebratory aspect of joining the big 12 on July 1st. That's that point. I think it's got to happen by then. It can't be any later than that because then once you're in there now, like you said, you've got to have all this apparel made. You have to have all these, you know, shoes and colorways and everything else. It's all going to be manufactured and sent out and, speaking on the footwear production side of things, that stuff takes time. I mean, it, you can get it. And of course, like in a bigger volume brand like Jordan, uh, <clears throat> who has a million bread colorways. Like, I think that's one thing that a lot of people overlook too. That was perfect. Why Cincinnati was a perfect brand. They were hot at the time. At the same time, Jordan was up and coming. And on top of that, Michael Jordan needed somebody who could be that red and black color team like the Bulls like all that hype around what Jordan was, that black and red bread colorway team at that time. And so I think that's kind of one of those things, the transitioning from then until now, like it's just, it's a, it'd be a really cool full circle thing. And I, I think it's going to happen soon. I it's, that's our natural intuition. That's all the conversation, but I'll also put, say this too. Like, I think there's a lot of weight in players putting stuff like that on their stories in players putting that kind of stuff online because can you imagine them doing that during the season? Like a player doing that, that that would never fly. And so like, it's one thing to just do that off the cuff, but it's another thing to come from like a player's account. It's another thing to come from all these other sources where it's like a legit, you know, you could be in contract violations, which Under Armour, not anymore, but still. And that's what makes it feel like it is a done deal because you're seeing yeah. these come out. Like you of course have to have your coaches be able to tell recruits what's going on, like what they'll yeah. be wearing, what the deal is. So that's why I think, you know, a deal has been made. They're just trying their best to keep it as quiet as possible. And of course you're always going to have student athletes that leak things, whether it's mm-hmm. in class at well, a party on social media, like, so they're, apparently the they're, coaches they're the, they're the best rumor mills out there. <laughs> yeah. So apparently like Wes Miller was spotted in Hyde Park yesterday not wearing his Ferragamo shoes. I just, Joel, <laughs> did you did you hear about that what he wore the shoes he wore on the side? Yeah, okay. like the the like $1000 sneakers. Yeah. Sort of okay. Thing. All right. So but uh but apparently he was wearing a full Jordan jumpsuit like just the other day wow. in Hyde Park just out in the I mean, you know, he, he's he can wear it's what he wants. It's like. a little late for jumpsuit January. So yeah, something else had to have been going on. Yeah, 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 exactly. Tracksuit mafia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I would I would pay so much money to see him in like a full red Jordan jumpsuit, red Jordans, and then just like hair slicked back, like classic mafia style. I want to see it. My uh my old hometown in Michigan, their high school, um, it's like 30 minutes away from U of M. Um, back in the early 19. 19- 
1800s, the high school, um, like their head coach knew the Michigan head coach. And when they were starting up their football team, they just got all the hand-me-downs from Michigan football. And to this day, they're like the exact same replica. What if we just got replicas of the Bulls jerseys? <laughs> I I kind of don't hate it. That's kind of cool, honestly. Like, <laughs> I, I, I like that. It's clean that's good. Like the the yeah. pinstripes, like the black with the the red pinch. Oh, that's a the, or like something that just it's like the Red Bulls jersey, but it says Cincy. Oh, yeah, that'd be because cool. odds are you're not going to be able to use the cat scratch. You're not going to be able to use the triangle design. So, do they go back to the blocks on the side? Like, what what is the brand going to be? I Which would. I'm very interested in because we didn't have. Um, do we have the blocks on the football jerseys? No, never did. Yeah, uh, the the no. football jerseys were weird because like, uh, uh, uni nerd coming in here, but um, <laughs> they uh, it, we had champion uniforms on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's me. Uh, there's a we had like champion for a while, and then we also had like Russell Athletic for our football uniforms, and like it's just night and day compared to like what how cool the basketball team looked, and then our football team was just running out there and just. Yeah. I mean, they weren't ugly by any means, but it was just. Just so funny how much the two programs have just gone up and down. So, Joel, I'm just curious is like, you know, you're you're a, definitely like a fan. Like, would you would you want like, do you care about apparel providers? Like, I'm just kind of curious as like someone who, you know, you you went to UC, but like, would you I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. Do you do you care about it at all? Or oh, does it, yeah. I mean, okay. I think when you're looking at it, like. Nike is the top dog. Jordan is like the step above the top dog. Like that's kind of the elite club. Um, so that would of course be really fun, like really cool to uh, be a part of that. Um, and I mean, I, I'm one of those guys who like, if I'm wearing an Under Armour jersey, I'm going to be wearing Under Armour shoes. Like I'm not one to mix, like mix brands, especially when I'm wearing some type of jersey. So um yeah like wearing jordan brand wearing nike brand would be pretty cool because i mean that's like the top brand in athletics right now yeah yeah and okay. i th i would say one thing too like again from the technolo technological standpoint like jordan has done a really good job especially in basketball like pushing the edge when it comes to footwear um and it, and jerseys as well i think one thing that makes jordan so attractive over Nike in just, even if it's just in basketball is just the fact that like everybody knows how templated Nike can get. Mm -hmm. Nike has some cool stuff and that's never a knock on them because of course, like having the largest apparel provider would be great to be able to go on the Nike website and actually order a Jersey like Under Armour. You cannot do that. Like yeah. you can't, you can't go to the Under Armour website and order Bearcats jerseys. You might be able to order a shirt or two, but like having that selection would be great. And I think just from that technological standpoint, like these companies really do find a way to push that innovation. And I think Under Armour, while they've tried, kind of sits behind mm -hmm. in that curve. And I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited from that standpoint because it just allows us to get that like edge, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's whether it be a competitive edge. I think in NIL talk, in recruiting talk, I think that's the biggest thing. So when you're speaking as like a fan, it's like, all right, sweet, like. I want to wear Jordan. I want to do that and be repping the Bearcats at the same time. It's one thing. It's another thing to say, like, I want to be able to get the best recruits in the country. What better way to sell them than on Jordan mm -hmm. and to sell them on that? Because like, you know, not every single fan cares about Jordan in the same way. And I, I like your question too, Steve, because like, you know, people might think like, Oh, like why would anybody not want Jordan? But there's some people who really just don't care players on the other hand, Jordan Nike, like that's what they want. They don't like look at like Under Armour's like, yes, like give me that over Nike. Give me that over Jordan. Nobody's saying that. They want to be able to to get the the free Jordans from school. Like they want to be able to do that. Like that's a leg up. And so. even and even adding on top of that, you know, we're able to say, yeah, we're a big 12 school now. Or like you can say, yeah, we're a big 10 school. We're an SEC school. Like players will be able to say I'm a Nike athlete. Like they'll yeah. be wearing, they'll be I'm wearing a big 12 Nike athlete. <laughs> exactly. Like that, yeah. it has a much better ring to it than I'm an Under Armour American Athletic Association athlete. Yeah. Yeah. No more drone shows from, from <laughs> Nike and Jordan. 
I'm an Under Armour independent Catholic school boy. I will hey. say though, that Nike can get very um, bland very quickly, like yep. kind of, you know, keeping it sleek or keeping it minimalistic while other people might just call it boring. So <laughs> I hope it's not just, you know, plain black jerseys, plain black pants with like a red, you know, trim down the side. And that's that, like, I want something unique to the university. You know, you have those, those iconic designs of the blocks of the cat scratch of the triangles. And maybe that's gotten our hopes up, but I want something as iconic. Speaking yeah. of iconic designs and something that could be totally off the wall. If you were to, if, if you were to do one thing, Steven, I've had this conversation a million times, but if you were to do one thing to spice up a Cincinnati Bearcats Jersey, could have any amount of tradition for the Bearcats, Cincinnati, whatever. What would you do? Give me one serious one and then one just like Joel answer. So this one might give, get me some flack as well, but I always liked the Cincinnati skyline that Xavier's court had on it. I hated that it was on Xavier's court because it's not called Xavier, Ohio. It's Cincinnati, Ohio. Like Damn right. On our court. And that'd be super cool. Um, not really Jersey oriented, but um, I don't know. You know, I I love my favorite uniform combo was uh, the black black jersey, white pants, black helmet, white face mask. I mm. loved that. I thought that looked mm. so sleek. So I want as much. Um, and you know, Oregon does it all the time. You know, other schools have all these different jersey and uniform combinations i want as much customization with whatever brand we go with i want to be able to mix and match and make mm -hmm. all those uniforms again um yeah definitely that, yeah. Uh, i i think the like something fun would just be like um somehow getting like the old bearcat head on like a basketball jersey like it's never been it's on easy a, money yeah, yeah. Yeah, like obviously, I Joel. My only goal for us, if we do end up doing Jordan or Nike, is I just want more jerseys than Xavier. I just want. Well, yeah. I want. That's going to be more. hard to beat. They've got like seven right now. Like well, seriously, I, mean, I want two more because we have two more national championships than them. But um, I could also <laughs> go for six more because we have six more Final Fours than them. But you know, that's just being greedy. <laughs> Arkansas, Joel wore like fifteen this year. Jesus. Yeah. I will, they were crazy. I want to I want to throw this out there too because I was talking to Steve about this before we started that I came to the realization today a long time ago realization but it's fresh in the mind that if we go Jordan or if we go Nike for basketball we will have the gold championship tag with two little hatches in it for two national championships and that will be on the jersey every single time we play and that would be pretty damn cool. Oh, I know okay. it's one of those things that's like, you know, especially if we're all we're, we're, we're uni nerds in here. We're uni nerds. Like it's one of those things that is such a cool touch because it's so small, but you see it from a mile away, especially on a black Jersey. You'll see that from a mile away, that championship tag. I don't yep. care how long ago it was. Fuck you, Xavier fans. It's, it's one of those things. It's like, we can say that we have that. You, there is there are so few schools that can do that, and it's so unoften that you find a new like. Look at San Diego State and FAU. Like they had a legit shot to win a national championship. I, actually, San Diego State might have a national championship somewhere in there. A long time ago, who knows? But I don't think so. Not basketball. That was not the basketball. first time Oh well, there you go. Well, so regardless, like again, so very few schools. Like maybe twenty can have that on there. May it's probably more than that, but like having that little championship tag as a constant reminder of that part of your history, I think is really cool. Like, it's so cool to see that on the North Carolina jerseys on the Duke jerseys. It pops off that blue. It'll pop off the red. It'll pop off the black. It's going to be nice. Did you guys see the ruckus troll everyone today? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that, that Joel, like, or like someone, that. someone in our discord blocked the ruckus account just because they, <laughs> they did that. Um, so, Joel, what do you think about? Uh, I'm sorry, go go ahead, but I do want to ask you about our, our coach's style choices. I was just going to explain what the troll was for anyone that hadn't yeah. seen it. So earlier this morning, they uh, tweeted out like big announcement coming at 1 p.m. and 
everyone in the comments what you know eyeball emojis like oh my god it's happening like all these gifts anticipating this big announcement and then one o'clock came and it was just student season football tickets go on sale next week <laughs> register now um assholes every, everyone was just so upset <laughs> big well, announcement coming at 1 p.m i got laid off no. <laughs> <laughs> something like that that I ju- uh, Joel, did you or and Justin too? Did you did either of you notice what shoes Scott Satterfield was wearing in that photo shoot? Mm-mm. I did not. He know. had the most polished dress shoes you ever did see on a man, and yeah. he man, like I just love that they left his dress shoes in the Photoshop uh, just so like you could see the bottom of his feet and that they weren't like Jordans or anything. It was just yeah. like real clean dress. I don't know. It was I mean, s- similar to when they were doing uh like the plane watch at Lindner, like you can tell a lot yeah. from the sneakers. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I'm just, Luke's I'm gone. excited for the Nike visors. Those are going to yeah. get off the shelves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want a Nike hoodie yesterday. Um, and I, I do, I've always wanted a pair of Space Jam 11s, uh, you know, just like Michael Jordan did in actual Space Jam. So here's a, I'll... here's my favorite part about changing, um, changing apparel deals is all the clearance Under Armour that we're about to be able to buy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Like, Hey, I can't turn down a good deal, you know? Sure. So I, I'm going to get all I can <laughs> mm-hmm. like I mean... buy a Jersey. Why not? Yeah, this is this is the one thing I will say that on the other side of this coin that sucks. The only thing that sucks about going to Nike or Jordan is that everybody will pay a little bit higher of a price tag on stuff. But to the same effect, you're paying $120 for a Nike or Jordan basketball jersey versus paying what 110 for an yeah. Under Armour one, like the level of quality is much different. I, I will, Under Armour has like sublimated everything. I, I want, I want real stitch jerseys. Nike Swingman for anybody who's ever bought like professional like basketball jerseys, like the high top of the line stuff, like NBA jerseys, like that quality is honestly fantastic and it's like, awesome. Look, and, look at this guy right here. Like this is yeah. like the Suns. Like it's got like an actual stitch logo in there, and like that real stitching in here too. It's the 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 logo and the jer- the number is stickered on. But I gotta it's... say that looks great quality with the with the <laughs> 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 background. <laughs> that entire jersey was just blurry. <laughs> so so is that thirty five in reference to uh the, the to the the traveling man himself, Kevin Durant? That 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 is him. Yes, the yeah. world traveler. Yeah, yeah. I uh, we that was we a quick purchase. That, uh, well, yeah, I bought it like the night he he well, or like the week after he he got traded here. Yeah. <laughs> I think one more thing I'm excited for as well is I hope that this new apparel deal ushers in a new era of marketing for the university because for so long they were so tight and so strict with where their logo was used and you know what partnerships they could make. That's why Boldly Bearcat took so long to be a permanent flavor is because, mm-hmm. you know, Graders was before it. It was UC. <laughs> Leave it to Joel to turn this into an, an angry rant about but He's Boldly right, Bearcat. though. He's, he's right. Let him cook. It's so right. But hold up, hold up. Let but him it's, cook. It's the reason that, you know, on like all these fanatic sites and all these, you know, when you go into Target or Walmart or any of these places, yeah, it's like not like it's off brand stuff, like it's, you know, Walmart brand or whatever it is, but it is the university and it is the athletic name. Like you see Ohio state, you see Michigan, you see Alabama all over the place, these big brands and Cincinnati wasn't allowed to become one of those because they were so strict. Like it had to be official university apparel or they weren't allowed to use the logo at all. So I hope that with the new apparel deal, I know the university will still have their own say over, you know, where and when it can be used but i kind of hope it kind of changes that tone to where they're more lax with it i mean that's a very good point like walking into a you know regular retail store like that and being able to actually see bearcat stuff on the shelves and not just be like oh do i pick between the like three michigan state items or the 40 ohio state items in you know downtown cincinnati like nobody wants that like 
put the Bearcats out there. Like I've seen more Xavier stuff on shelves than Bearcat stuff in that. And I think that is a big part of that. Like Nike allows you to be a little more loosey goosey with stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. It, that's, that's a very good point too. Like just being able, able to have that brand and, visually out there is fantastic. And maybe it was just a smaller school mindset where, you know, we need to make money off of everything that, you know, our name image and likeness is used for. Um, and so being a bigger school, you know, going into the big 12, getting this new apparel deal, I just really, really hope that, you know, you start to see the sea paw, um, out there more. Yeah. Actually, well said. do you guys think a new logo is coming at all? Or do you think the sea paw is pretty set for a while? No, I have it just, no. they just put down a new court, um, at, uh, uh, in the fifth yeah. third, and it still had like the regular C Paul black over yeah. red. It's uh, it's it, not so. the Ed Jucker court anymore, is it? There, there are new sponsors for it. It's the Hersha court, yeah. They're good, yeah. they're um, it is a little inside baseball here, but they are also the presenting sponsor for the new uh practice facility, too. So, oh. the can Hirsch we, family, can Shout we finally out. change over uh, the baseball stadium? Can we do that? No, too? Uh, it's still UC baseball stadium. <laughs> yeah. I just, I would like something done with Armour Fieldhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently they're, they're trying hockey, to renovate that too. Hockey. It's, but they're, it's full they're gonna of renovate asbestos. It. They're going to renovate it. So hold on, hold on. They're going to renovate it, but it's still going to be for indoor track. So sorry. Oh, well. Just make It'll it look cool though. Make yeah. it multi-purpose. Let let it be used for volleyball courts. Let it be, you know, I know hockey, uh, yeah. in ice hockey is kind of a long yep. shot. All right. Basketball. Well, yeah. Let's put it this way. Would you be willing? How, I want to know how willing you are. How many slap shots? Like if you had to sit in front of the goal, no goalie gear, how many slap shots with a hockey puck from the hockey team are you willing to take to get a hockey arena in Armory Fieldhouse? Give Straight me one, to the balls. One from every roster player. Wow. Damn. Damn. So you, you're getting like 25. Uh, and so guys, guys, <laughs> hockey is an amazing sport. Um, you know what else UC needs going into the Big 12? We need to we need a women's softball team. You're right. Yes. You're right. You're right. We need a we need a softball team. Yeah. Yep. I completely agree. And I know that our campus is limited of where it can be, but whether you do like a temporary field, uh like you know, or outfield wall. Um, I know that there are some schools that where the two teams share and they just have that temporary wall that gets lined up. Um, you know, I don't know what the logistics of bringing a softball team in would be, but um, I think, you know, we're one of like 15 D1 schools. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's very minimal that don't have uh, a women's softball team. Uh, we want to take this time to mention that this podcast is sponsored by Graders, Boldly Bearcat. It's very good, <laughs> and you should all eat some. We now have, uh, we actually technically have official sponsors, but it's like also not technical. Home field, baby. Shout out, uh, shout out kind of, I guess, home field. Mainly shout out uh, 1012. We're still figuring that out, but um, I would love, to, we should reach out to Graders. Maybe we can make it happen. Did I ever tell you guys a story about um, when Grader's Boldly Bearcat was just a limited flavor? So, so when was it this was, one... this was oh. years ago, like it was first released on campus, like a limited run. You could mm-hmm. only get it when President Ono was handing it out. Um, and then uh, they announced that it was a January, like limited flavor. And mm. at the end of January, I it it immediately became my favorite ice cream. Not just because mm. it's UC branded, but it's it's genuinely so good. Red velvet mascarpone ice cream, which means it's a cream cheese base with graters like trademark massive chocolate chunks and Oreo pieces. So good. <laughs> I went to Kroger. I bought twelve pints. Of boldly bear cat. Do you remember the story? Put them, now. put them <laughs> in my brother-in-law's deep freezer, and I got one pint a month until that next January when it came out again, and that's when it became like a full-time flavor, and you can get it year-round now. But I bought twelve pints just to have one a month. It was, <laughs> it it was probably like a seventy eighty dollar ice cream purchase at, at <laughs> uh, well worth it. Absolutely worth it. 
It's taking it off the shelves. I will say the only flavor that I have bought more in advance so that I could have it later was Elena's blueberry. Mm. That blueberry pie ice cream that they have is just mm, so hot notch. They recently made chunk, they recently made chunky chunky hippo a limited flavor for just January, mm. and that's my wife's favorite flavor. And it used to be year round. So guess what we did at the end of January? <laughs> we, we only bought, bought well, you, we, you we bought. only bought six pints. We only oh, bought sixty four pints. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we've got those stocked in. in uh, if you guys hear of a man in the Cincinnati area hijacking a graders <laughs> truck, uh, that that it's probably Joel. <laughs> probably local bearded man under the Handsome alias of dude. Lisa Brandon's burner has <laughs> has robbed the graders Brinks truck. Oops, that's me. Adds a new meaning to back up the Brinks truck. So. Talking specifically on a couple points we wanted to hit before we're done today, uh, we wanted to officially eulogize Under Armour. We have reached the may may it be metaphorical, may it be actual. It, it it is actual, but we don't have a hard set time until we get the new deal. Under Armour is dead for the Bearcats. It's not going anywhere. We're not going to get that deal back. If we do. We're all going to look like idiots, and it's going to be really damn funny. But until that point, we are going to eulogize Under Armour. So, Steve, please hit me with some of the points that we are going to uh, remember in our Viking funeral for the UA. So, yeah, the UA, uh, click clack, protect this house, I will, all the good stuff, Uh it it had a good run while it lasted, but uh, you know it just didn't really uh, pan out. So we will remember them for the Cincinnati stripe. Uh, however controversial it was, it was something unique created for Cincinnati, and we do thank them for that. They did make some pretty good throwbacks, I'll say. One for every um, well, every men's sport. No women's throwbacks. What the hell are we doing there, Under Armour? <laughs> um, and also. They just decided to grace us after canceling the contract mid-2020 with a wonderful drone show, So, uh, which Justin has already loved. You guys know my feelings about that. Yes. So uh, Under Armour, it's, it's been a good run, but so long and thanks for all the fish. We don't, we don't need you anymore. And that is the eulogy for Under Armour. RIP lived from uh, 2015 to 2023, a long, strong, hard uh, eight years, if I can do my math correct. It's probably, well, it was what, April of 2015 to possibly April of 2023. So that's a nice, clean eight years. It was 2015 because, how I mentioned, I like buying clearance jerseys. Uh, I think I might still have my Adidas uh, football jersey that we got uh, going into my freshman year. There you go. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 mean, I just remember it because it got leaked through the press in January, and I tweeted something about it, and I had to delete it from my personal account, and then it didn't come out till April, which is why it's so weird that nobody's leaked this at all. Like it has not, like there's no leaks or anything, and uh, you know, I, I would have thought for now. I mean. John Cunningham, but still, I would have thought somebody would have leaked it by now. You guys think? It... <laughs> you guys think Michael Jordan himself will make an appearance at UC with Roy Williams, who already came for a West Miller game? Yes, Roy Williams and... would absolutely be there. But... As long as Michael Jordan has the glass of whiskey from the Last Dance in his hand, then I'm good with that. And the cigar, mm -hmm. you know, and just like, yeah, Cincinnati basketball, what, a, what of it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. And I took that personally. <laughs> I was gonna about to say, I took that personally. I think uh, I think that this is a interesting time to now with the university moving forward with all of these revolving parts that are going to be changing to you know be a part of a different brand just in general. I think it's the most clean transition you could possibly have. You go into a new big contract with the Big Twelve. You get all these new TV deals. You have all this new money flowing in. Having that extra little spice on top is going to be great. One thing that we, uh, two, two, not things, two people um, that we will miss, however, um, that will be leaving the Bearcats, never getting to wear Jordan or Nike, 
Jeremiah Davenport and Landers Nolly. Both of them have said their salutes and their goodbyes. Landers Nolly has signed as an agent. He will be going to the NBA draft to play his luck there. I think he has a legitimate shot. He has all the makings of an NBA player in length, size, positionless play, his scoring ability. It's all there. I think he's got a legit chance. Jeremiah Davenport, on the other hand, uh, will be moving on to another school. Uh, We're still yet to hear on what that will be. Um, and of course we admit we will miss him and wish him all the luck. Um, I think, you know, both of them were very interesting contributors this year in different ways. Landers Nolly only being a one year Jeremiah Davenport having four strong years with the Bearcats. Um, and as Steve mentioned before all of this, that, uh, my list of the five, the five who stayed the five Bearcats recruits since Mick Cronin's. 2016 class that have stayed here has now dwindled down to four because Jeremiah Davenport has left. I would assume that at this point, if he's out the door and the way the transfer portal works, you would think if Micah was going to leave that he would be on his way out as well. We haven't heard any news on that. So I would think that that's probably a little bit of a stronger sign that he will stay. Time will tell. But if that's the case, then we'll be down to just three. And David DeJulius and Jaron Cumberland have cemented their place on that list, leaving only Victor Locken. So Victor Locken and, and Micah Adams Woods are the only ones of the <laughs> of the what was it six consecutive recruiting classes that can manage to stick around. I am still upset about. That. Anyways, yeah, yeah. I, there was a lot of you know, mixed emotions about Jeremiah Davenport leaving. Um, And it was kind of sad to see because he was such a contributor to Bearcat basketball. You know, he always, he always brought the grit, you know, while he may not have been one of our strongest players, he got some really valuable minutes and he always gave his all, you know, Cincinnati kid went to Moeller, um, came up through UC. Um, The only thing I have to do is thank him for his time. Um, you know, once a Bearcat, always a Bearcat. I think he was a good contributor for this transitional period of basketball that we had. And while, of course, you always want to see, you know, everyone have amazing years go off into the NBA, um, you know, while he never had one of those types of seasons, I think he had a very good career with the Bearcats. Um, and I think he gave it his all and you know, us as fans need to be really appreciative of a guy that kind of did that. I would like to say too, that like, it's not every day that you have somebody who's a thousand point scorer. And like, I know that that's to a lot of people just gets washed out as a number. Like you think of the guy, the greats who, you know, score 2000, you think of a guy like, you know, SK scoring 2000 points. It's like, wow, that like cements your legacy. Like as a tried and true bear cat, there's not a lot of 1K scorers, so to have somebody like that in that lineup, I think it's great, and I, I really will I, I will miss having Davenport on this team. I know a lot of people, you know, like you said, had mixed feelings, and it was controversial, but he was a strong contributor, and I've, I am a firm believer in team chemistry, oh, yeah. and being able to bring that into a new conference where they're going to beat the shit out of you. Uh, and so having somebody who's been there, who's been in the dumps with your team as well, to be able to be a part of that in and, and to usher in that new conference, usher in that new era of players, be that vet on the team, whether you think of, you know, highly or less high of his skill, having that kind of vet that's been around the block with Cincinnati is always good to have in the locker room. So missing that is going to hurt, but that's a lot said on Davenport. Um, again, to Nolly's point. Oh, go ahead, Joel. I have one more thing to say about Davenport. When he was hot, he was hot, and he had mm-hmm. some of the most memorable heat checks in games that oh, I remember. For sure. for sure. Yeah, he, he loved just to pull up from 30 feet and be like, hurry! And yeah. it's just, <laughs> sometimes yeah. it didn't fall, but uh, good for him, man. Like, I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, hopefully, whatever school he goes to, we'll schedule them in the non-conference, and he can just get a hero's welcome for one We'll get the game. old Mamadou Diara. Return, That's right. Return That's right. to fifth third. <laughs> yeah. And then when it when it comes to Nolly, um, I'm not sure if you were going to lead the discussion Go ahead. anywhere else, Justin. But um, it was awesome to kind of have another talent like I mean, 
maybe not similar to Tari Eason, but, you know, he came in, um, you know, didn't get the minutes, went to LSU, of course, and then was, you know, this amazing draft prospect. It was awesome to kind of have one of those players on that same caliber who was able to, you know, spend one year in a big role and go test his luck in the NBA. I really wish that he stuck around because he's a great talent. And, um, you know, next year he probably would have just risen his draft stock even more playing in the Big 12 against these better opponents regularly and still producing the same numbers, if not better. But, um, you know, best of luck to him as he pursues a career in the NBA. I hope he fostered a, a trash talking in like one of the younger guys because Landers not only trash talk was like undefeated. Like sometimes you could just hear it when there was not many people in yeah. the buildings on even on TV. And uh, he, he, he could talk with the best of them. So uh, hopefully Daniel Skillings or one of the younger guys has that ability. But yeah, I think he, I mean, you know, this team is better and like a part of a reason for that is Landers Nolly. And I, you know, he, he played well and he showed, I think he showed to future players what you can do in West's system and like what playing for West Miller gives you, gives you the freedom, gives you the ability. And like, if we get more guys, you know, who can like come in like that and be one year guys, just like, a Landers Nolly and come in and be transfers. I think that was only a positive for your Bearcats. I would just like to put this out here as a simple question. I want a one, one sentence answer, zero explanation past that. It's going to be difficult. If you were to make your predictions right now as to what player is going to pop off next year for the Bearcats, who would it be? One player, one sentence. Feelings. Yeah, um, I would say honestly, like uh, I think Ravon is going to pop next year, and it's not going to be he's going to put like put up thirty points in a game or something. But I think you like jo- Joel. I got to go see Ravon actually because he was playing his high school ball out here in Arizona for the year. I got to see him on his senior night, and man, he gets in dude's shirts like he's a classic like. Uh, you know, Hep Cronin's son recruit. Like uh, he, he like is just like right there in the defenses. Like it, he's, he plays tight defense, passes the ball. He's always energetic, like always on, like he's going to do some things and he's going to like have some dunks this year where they're like, Oh my God. So, and so I'm really excited about Rayvon. So I lost count after about 10 sentences there. It was supposed to be one, but (laughs) Damn you, Steve. Hey, no. <laughs> we're on a podcast. I we're talk. on a podcast. It's fine. It's fine. What it's do you fine. want me to do? No, um, I, I would agree. My answer was going to be Rayvon as well. And for, for many of the same reasons, I think he's just a get up in your face and and classic Bearcat type of baller who's got a lot of skill and a lot to offer. So. I, I guess I wasn't considering any of the new guys coming in. Um, I said skillings because I just think he had flashes um, when he was kind of in those big moments where, you know, no one could guard him. Um, yeah. And he, you know, definitely also yeah. wasn't afraid to kind of drive or pop off or, you know, and he made all of his layups too, yeah. like an underrated part about him. Like is a, a easy way to win my heart over is if you make your like layup uh, shots right around the basket and you, you aren't like the dude who's just like goes up bricks, a, a one foot shot and then <laughs> has to get your own rebound and you get blocked. And he made his layups. He made shots around the rim. I am the old head who will always scream free throws and I will, <laughs> I will die on that hill until right, I, it's throws. every Look at look at the NCAA tournament. Look at every single game during conference play. Look at the tournament games and non-conference play. Look at the games against Xavier's and all of those. And look at the free throw percentages. The games where you are on top and you've got it figured out and you're getting the calls and it works, you're winning. And when it doesn't, you lose. That is how it happens. And I will die on that hill. So moving on. Transfer portal news. Speaking of new Bearcats, we've mentioned it earlier in the show. We're making a really large circle all the way back to it. Jamil Reynolds is officially a Bearcat, and this guy is a Renaissance man in the American. He started at UCF, ended up at Temple, and now he's a Bearcat, but not an American Bearcat, a Big 12 Bearcat. He's 6'10, 285 pounds, averaged 10 and 5 with Temple, possible newcomer. 
Aaron Estrada is, has you seen his top four most recently saw him at Hofstra and Houston somehow got even better in the transfer portal. We are going to go back to Jameer Reynolds now, but those are all our transfer portal points. Yeah. You needed a big, uh, you needed a guy who has like good playing experience and like 10 points from a big man. I don't think we've had that production consistently from either of our two guys this year. Obviously Lockin got hurt and Odie assumed his powers when he went down. So, but if, you know, I Joel, correct me if I'm wrong, but my theory is that UC basketball is about big men, you know, and like we've had, we, you know, obviously there's Troy Copain's, Jaron Cumberland's, Nick Van Exel's of the world, but we've had so many better big men in our history than we have guards. And obviously Oscar Robertson was the best guard of them all, but more recently, you know, I think, you know, like obviously Danny Fortson, Kenny Martin, uh, Jason Maxiel, Eric Hicks, uh, Gary Clark, Kyle Washington. And, you know, I think just last year, the amount of rebounds we just would not get uh, just because we were not big enough was shocking. But the rebound, we, uh, Justin, I think all the games we won were was because we won the rebounding battle. So mm-hmm. just more size and more length. I think it's a great thing. I think you can also call it's it. It's always a great thing. Um, I think <laughs> – Looking back in the NIT, that's one of the reasons why we lost against Utah Valley State Community College Sisters of the Poor. Um, yeah. <laughs> we we couldn't stay down low. We couldn't rebound. We you know there was no way of stopping them. So I'm really excited um, to have you know some of these bigger guys come in and um, yeah, hopefully make that difference. Yeah. Um, speaking on the uh, <clears throat> points here, Steve. Would you like to inform us a little more on uh, this possible prospect? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Aaron Estrada, uh, he uh, – so don't listen to uh, On3 because apparently they just use, like, uh, an algorithm that just aggregates how many people are talking about a player being connected to, like, a different school as their crystal ball. So don't listen to anything they say. But Aaron Estrada, 20 points last year, five rebounds, four assists – 47% of uh, 48% shooting from the field. Um, needless to say, he's pretty good and he'd only have a year left, but man, like just having a score like that in the big 12, that's another Landers Nolly type guy. And uh, mm-hmm. he's, we're competing with new conference mate, Kansas state for him as well as Arkansas and uh, no Alabama and uh, St. John's, I think. But um, yeah, it just, man, what a get that would be to get Aaron Estrada here. And just, like I said, another Landers Nolly type. Forgive my ignorance, but does John Newman have another year? He does. Yeah. Yep. So they're and figuring that it. out right now. He just, they have to like get him the medical waiver or something or you know, try and get him an extra year because he already took an extra medical year and the COVID year. So I think this would be like year seven for him. Oh, so but... this guy's like 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Newman's yeah. And, at least it. 25, I think. Yeah. He's like my age. Five. I, I went to college for about parts of seven years. So, I mean, you know, John and John Newman and I are on the same, we're on the same academic track. I'm, I'm graduated now, but yeah. okay. That's a lie. Uh, guess what year he was born in, uh, 1998. I'm going to guess 2000, 99, Whoa. 99 baby. So he is not as old as you old head, Steve. Uh, <laughs> he's only what? 23. Yeah. 23. So he's, I think it's also one of those things too, when like, you know, the time that he spent at Clemson as well, and like just kind of where his career has taken him. I I really hope that he can just find that groove and stay healthy in this next season because as we all saw in his, you know, first season with the Bearcats, the man's got a lot of lot to offer. He is a like we like we've mentioned before. I I don't know. I think we all have this so, we, we don't like to admit it, but we have this obsession with Mick Cronin style basketball. It's maybe ugly. It may be a lot of rock fights and nobody wants to admit that they love it, but you love it. It's Bearcats basketball. It's what we grew up with. It's what we know. It's in your face. Beat you down, grab the boards, disciplined and kill you if you aren't disciplined type of basketball. And everybody loves that. And John Newman is that. That it's is exactly what he is. What he is. It's what initiated the cardiac cats. Yes. Every game was a rock (laughs) fight. Every game was that bully ball. You were going to have games that were 45 to 46 with five minutes left. Like you're, 
you know, I still remember the Iowa state game that was like 56 to 55 or 55 to 54. Yeah. Like that is a classic, like rock fight. Yeah. Like I love those type of games because I mean, I think so, I've heard many professional players talk about how they can't watch a college basketball game or how it's so ugly. And if you're not a sicko, why are you listening to this podcast in the first place? But second of all, like, be a sicko, like enjoy the ugliness of basketball sometimes and enjoy the beauty of it at the same time. Because like, I think both offer those things and especially like defensive basketball is just such a underrated aspect of sports. Like when you just see true defensive basketball, it's beautiful. Like Houston has played some fantastic defensive basketball in the midst of the Bearcats, not doing so much of that. Uh, but I think this is one of those things where moving forward, I would still love to see our identity be that. I think we've got a lot of talent coming in the door, but if we can manage to maintain that defensive identity, I think it started to slip away. That's not necessarily part of Wes's MO. He talks it, but I don't think he necessarily walks it defensively in the same way that we want it to be. If we can get back to that, I, I, I would love that. It's just, it's, it's awesome to have that defensive prowess and something to hang your hat on because, you know, you can be a top 60 three-point shooting team. You can be top 60 in all these metrics, but what do the other people know you for? What are they scared of when they go to play in your gym? You know, I, I think that's one of those things that's really cool preparation-wise, but. So I would love to say that um, fifth third was always rocking, you know, in those final uh, Mick years. And I mean, even in the beginning of the Brandon years, because we had some of that still carry over, um, but we've lost a little bit of that type of home court advantage that I'm hoping to get back with these bigger opponents, with these bigger recruits and transfers. Um, I went to the NIT game that we hosted and it was absolutely amazing. And you know why it was amazing <laughs> is because there were no season ticket holders <laughs> that had unused seats or were, you know, these, um, old head donors that, you know, just weren't as involved in the games anymore that were just there because they get those tickets. Um, it was all, you know, first come first serve seating on the website. So you had current students, you had recent alumni, um, that were in like the champions club and right there on court side. And it was one of the most rowdy games that I'd been to. And it wasn't because it was as full as it has been. They had the entire top section completely blocked off, but it was because the entire lower bowl, everyone was standing, everyone was screaming and cheering. And, you know, I want that environment back. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's, it's beautiful. Like this is one of those things where th fortunately you were able to be there. Steve and I, of course, weren't because we're out of state, but it's one of those things where on TV you watch it and you see exactly what you're saying, every bit and piece of it. Like you get that big 12 environment energy, you get that raucous fifth third energy that you want. And so like, I think going forward, I would really love to see them try to find a way to scheme figuring that out to be more energetic in the lower bowl. And I think personally have people will show 10 PM up but... game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, one 10 PM game. The like it gets added at the last second. So season ticket holders like can't get the tickets and then you just do it. So yeah, but, and people would get mad about that. I would like to see like Bearcat madness come back too, and like, I feel like that's kind of like the same, same idea. But... Maybe we, <laughs> this is an idea. Don't take me too seriously here, but maybe we just do like a, 10 a.m. Sunday morning game. So all of the like season ticket old churchgoers won't show up <laughs> and you'll just have all of the angry Rockets Bearcats fans you shouting idiot. profanities. You idiot. You're suggesting a 10 a.m. Sunday game when everyone's out at Woody's until 3 a.m. the night before. <laughs> or, or like, it, you know, people are going to like getting tailgating and watch the Bengals game too. So, yeah. oh, very true. Like I said, not serious, but I would like, I, I would really love to see something where we can just, like you said, guarantee that a lot of the old heads are going to be sleeping or they're going to be out doing something else. I don't know what that would be, but we need to figure it out. Um, our last point here to wrap us up, the NFL draft is coming up. Uh, as we've mentioned before, we are on our off season schedule. So we're doing a show every other week or every other, other week. Uh, so it's not as consistent during the season which means that we probably won't have another one before the draft starts. So with that said, light points to hit 
on the draft. There's a couple names floating around. There's some there's there's some recent updated draft metrics as well. Um, if you would like to read more about that, I would suggest heading over, of course, always to your Cat Skeller friends. I don't think we've put out uh, any official draft information yet. I don't think there's Maybe many articles. Should. Maybe we should. But until then, you can get a uh, much more inside, inside source with Justin Williams as well. I know that he just put something out. Um, haven't had the chance to read that. But uh, as far as NFL draft goes, boys, just want to know, what are your general thoughts where do you think Bearcats will end up? Do you, who do you think has the best shot to go the length and hopefully make a, I would think second, third, first, do we have, do, does, does Ivan have a chance at first? Or do you think that this is a, do you think this is a second, third round kind of conversation? I don't think Ivan will be in the first. Um, I do think that he's going to be either a late day two or an early day three pick. Like, I don't think he's making it to the sixth or seventh round at all. Yeah. My fear um, is he's going to go to, you know, the Patriots or, uh, uh, or like the Steelers or one of these teams that has these traditional hard hitting linebackers that know how to use these you know hybrid type guys and he's just going to be you know their wild card there you know bowling yeah. at china stop and he's just gonna you know have a great career for a team <laughs> that i don't want to root for my mo- my greatest fear is that a bearcat will have a fantastic career exactly. <laughs> i mean I, I i almost hated travis kelsey for a while you know during like the last few playoffs but uh you know uh, i still love him i just like it just I, I, I don't like when my two loves cross streams, you know, yeah. it's not, it's not good for me. Yeah. Uh, never cross streams. No, how, did, no, no, <laughs> how did you, no. then how did you feel about uh, his comment specifically on Orlando Brown jr. Going to the Bengals? And he's like, it was like watching, it was like watching my best friend go to the dark side. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he's got a sense of humor, his podcast, yeah, yeah. brother. I mean, even throughout the season and throughout the playoffs, I, it just made me love them even more. You know, mm-hmm. I I don't hate the Chiefs, and maybe it's because they've only had recent success, but you look at the Steelers, you look at the Patriots, like these teams that have been the top dog for so long that you just build up, you know, this evil empire hatred of. I don't have that for the Chiefs yet. And yes, they just got their second, but I feel like they need to, you know, continue that success for a little longer before I'm like, all right, I'm a little tired of the Chiefs, you know. Patrick Mahomes is fun. You can have your opinions about his family. Travis Kelsey's fun. Andy Reid is fun. Like, it's a fun team to root for. That's not the arrogant, like, Belichick, Brady. Their fans are very obnoxious. I so it. so them beating the Bengals to go to the Super Bowl and then win it didn't really didn't really do much for you. Oh, no. It pissed me <laughs> off. I'm a Bengals fan. Don't get, like, I was yeah, rooting for the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Yeah, of course. But what I mean by that is, yeah. you know, I don't hate Kelsey for being on the chiefs. I don't hate, you know, also Kelsey for being on the Eagles. You know, yeah. there are teams in the NFL that I hate and there are teams in the NFL that like, I don't really care about like good for them if they have success. So that's why I say Ivan is going to go to one of these teams that knows how to use these agile, smaller backs. Um, and, you know, I think when you look at, scott um and um you know some of like wiley and some of our other players i think that we're gonna have another five six maybe even seven players wow. drafted. Um, who's your six and seven uh i don't know i was just kind of <laughs> when you start a sentence and you don't well, really but know the yeah, bigger number I, sounds better though <laughs> right i mean but five is definitely possible because you got yeah. scott tucker uh wiley, wiley. Taylor maybe is like a sixth or seventh round guy. Yeah, Apparently, Arquan Bush has been sliding up there. I'm I was I, not I think, very. I think Bush will be drafted Arquan. first. Yeah, I wasn't very high on him when he was here, but like I mean, you know, I, I'm all happy for him. And then obviously Ivan, so I could see six. Like I, I mean, and then do, maybe Jabari Taylor is the seventh, and like or yeah. like you know, I haven't, I haven't done anything. my due d- diligence on the draft process at all. So that was just can me. I can I tell you guys something. <laughs> I I could not care less about the draft unless it's like the Bengals or like, uh, well, you know, the Bearcats being drafted. You're like, leading into my final question to send us off for the evening, which which is if the bank, I don't care about need or any part of that. 
uh, of positional need or whatever. If the Bengals can draft one Bearcats player this year, which one would you choose? And I mean, maybe it comes down to need, but who would who do you think would be the best? Can Deshaun player? Pace leave early and be like a super safety for the <laughs> for the Bengals? Because I, I want them to draft Scott because yeah. odds are, you know, the the rumor is they just got a T Higgins deal done. They're of course going to keep Jamar and Burrow around so they're going to need to get some cheaper contracts tyler boyd's expires after this year so i think scott would be perfect to be the fourth option this year and then slide right into that slot man him in that joe burrow offense he just puts one foot in the ground catches the ball and he's gone <laughs> and like yeah, yeah oh my god it, i saw someone like wanting him to be picked by the browns and i was like yes spare cat but also no browns like, yeah. same with, so exactly what happened with i mean the Browns have been picking some Bearcats lately with Hudson and uh, Hudson a couple of years ago and Ford last year. Yep. So I wouldn't be surprised. I it's would. Just, you, you of course want your, you know, players to be drafted, but you don't want them to go to bad teams because while they may get a starting spot right away, if they're in a bad situation, they're not going to succeed. Yeah. I mean, I, I would agree too. I, I think that, I think I would say Scott would be my pick just because having, like you said, having that guy who can transition into that spot, I think somebody's going to have to hit the chopping block. And like you said, I think it's probably going to be Boyd. I would be interested too. I mean, I think Wiley would be a great choice. I, I don't remember what the whole situation is with Hurst right now. I think that he uh, is, is no longer a Bengal. He's in Carolina. Or, sorry. sorry. Uh, God damn it. Who am I thinking of? Irv uh, Smith. Oh, Irv Smith Jr. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you know, being oh, able wait. to solve that. Wiley would be a good bear, uh, Bengal, like having a yeah. tight, a young tight end to build around. Like, uh, man, I would love that. And, yeah. and you know, we've obviously have not necessarily had all the greatest success tight end wise. It's kind of been a reciprocating, you know, oh, we, we have some success and then they go and we have some success and then they go or we have some success and then they're injured. Um, uh, getting tight ends paid where you have Uzama and then Hurst and now Irv Smith is on a one-year prove-it deal and then he's going to sign a massive contract exactly. after he puts up 800 yards and you know eight touchdowns so we'll see yeah. what happens but um, Wiley would also be a good choice for the Bengals for sure well I think that does a good job of wrapping us up today Joel it was fantastic to have you back on here I think we, maybe we should do this a little more often. Uh, I Thanks it's for having you guys. It's wonderful having your voice on here. Thank you. Um, so. And of course, as always, uh, it's great to have a former Viva La Cats member on here as well. I mean, it, it's it's honestly just great to be able to get the get the gang back together. So, thank you guys for tuning in this week. Um, as we said, it's going to be a little bit of a choppy. We'll let you know when we drop a new episode kind of schedule for the off season. Um, we do have a couple gems lined up coming down the pipe eventually. Uh, so that's just telling you that we don't have anything planned, but we're going to have something cool planned eventually. So keep your ears out, keep your eyes on the Twitter, make sure to hit the bell and find our notifications. Joel sign us off. I can't wait for us to drop this pod and the Jordan deal to release on like Friday. Huh. Oh man, I, it would be, it would be good timing. I mean, we, we have not been known for good or bad timing yet. So <laughs> this is true. Never know. Maybe we will see. But again, thank you guys for listening. This has been Viva La Cats for myself, Steve and Joel. Take care folks. Go Bearcats. Go Bearcats. Oh, Bearcats.